Good evening, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Since this show launched in October, I've been warning about the crisis of democracy that has been engulfing this nation. And I'm sorry to have to report this to you, but the past week has brought even more confirmation that the crisis continues to get worse. In Texas, despite the slight reprieve, Republicans remain determined to pass a bill that would enact new and horrific restrictions on voting. Governor Greg Abbott says the bill will be back on the agenda when lawmakers meet in a special session later this year. It's one of nine bills to restrict voting now under consideration in the Lone Star State, tied for the highest number in the nation. Texas Republicans were fully prepared to sign the measure into law at the end of May, had House Democrats not successfully staged an 11th hour walkout to block the measure. Now, Republicans are being shamed into making the bill better, a provision that would take away Sunday uh, early voting aimed at hindering black churchgoers. Absolutely not, says Republican Representative Travis Clardy, one of the bill's architects. He says that must be a typo. If so, it's an awfully long and very specific typo. What about another provision that would make it easier for judges to overturn elections without any proof? Why? That would be a horrendous policy says the same Texas GOP lawmaker. Amazing. So both of these things this lawmaker claims to be against, he helped put in the legislation. The Texas Democrats who walked out on the bill are heading to Washington on Wednesday to meet with Vice President Harris. Maybe, just maybe, while they're in town, perhaps they could go give their national counterparts on Capitol Hill some advice on how to fight back, actually fight back against Republicans and to have a spine. Because this week we saw Senate Democrats, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, continue to hold the party's agenda to hostage. Manchin uh, was completely unmoved after a meeting with black civil rights leaders over his opposition to the voting rights bill, known as the For the People Act. But enjoy this offering of his meaningless word salad. We just had a good conversation. I told everybody out there, because I got to go and take care of this meeting. Did, you change it? Did they change your mind? What we had was a great, we had a respectful, we had a very informative, and it was a very good conversation we had, and as a starting of a good relationship, it really was. Don't worry, though, because House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is convinced, convinced that Manchin, a man who keeps saying he will never change his mind on this issue, might still change his mind. She says so. He wrote, I believe that partisan voting legislation will destroy the already weakening binds of our democracy. And for that reason, I will vote against the For the People Act, which is H.R. 1. So when Democrats literally don't have one vote to spare and you read that from Joe Manchin, how are you going to get it passed? I don't give up on Joe Manchin. No. I read the, the, yeah. uh, the op-ed and yeah. you read a part of it. Yeah. I think he left the door open. I think it's ajar. I, I'm, I'm not giving up. And it's not just Nancy Pelosi. Senator Dianne Feinstein declared this week that she also backs Joe Manchin on keeping the filibuster and said ridiculously, quote, if democracy were in jeopardy, I would want to protect it. But I don't see it being in jeopardy right now. I mean, amazing. It's easy to blame Republicans for undermining our democracy because they are. But they couldn't do it if some of these Democrats weren't shamefully in denial about it, shrugging their shoulders over it. This was also the week we discovered that Trump's Department of Justice seized the data of at least two Democratic members of Congress in 2017 and 2018. And as Slate magazine pointed out, this would be a remarkable set of circumstances under any administration. But as usual, that it happened during the Trump administration makes it even worse. The Trump DOJ's aggressive efforts targeting Democratic members of Congress appear to have occurred at the same time that the Justice Department was fighting a congressional subpoena for Trump's personal financial records, to say nothing of the administration stonewalling during the House's first impeachment and the department openly flouting congressional oversight throughout Trump's term. Rarely do we get such a stark example of the asymmetry of power between the two branches, a problem that's gotten worse across administrations of both parties. On Friday, Attorney General Merrick Garland unveiled a plan to protect voting rights. Good. But Biden's Attorney General has also sparked anger with his unwillingness to break with a lot of Trump DOJ policies and practices. For example, defending the former president in a defamation case brought by a woman accusing him of rape, ac accusations the former president denies, but the DOJ is defending him still. So the question stands, are Democrats in Congress up to this fight? Is Merrick Garland at the DOJ prepared to do everything it will take to not just protect voting rights from attack, but also hold the attackers, including the former president, to account? Ultimately, history will judge whether the Democratic Party rolled over when it mattered most.